66 people have gone missing since we've been on the air this morning, and we will never know the names or see the faces of most of them. Here's why. 1,900, that is approximately how many people are reported missing to the FBI every day. 40% of the missing are racial minorities. That is 270,680 people of color who went missing in 2010. 34% of all missing people are African Americans, mostly black men, even though 13% is the portion of the U.S. population that is African American. Daily, 2,000 children are reported missing to law enforcement, and 65% of kids who are taken by non-family members are racial minorities, most of them being African American children. Now, here is where the numbers trail goes cold, because I can't tell you how many stories I saw about Elizabeth Smart, and I can't tell you how many network news hits there were about Chandra Levy or about the disappearance of Natalie Holloway. What I can tell you is that, like you, I saw and heard a lot about those stories. And I felt for all of those women and for their loved ones, but I also feel for all of those other families who wonder and search and wait, which brings me to the number zero. That is how many national news stories I saw about Yasmin Akri of Chicago, missing since January of 2008, or Monica Bowie of Atlanta, missing since July of 2007, or Pamela Butler of Washington, D.C., missing since 2009. Until now, because my next guest is shining a searchlight on them and others who have been left missing. And that's right after the break, so don't go away. In the criminal justice system, as told by the TV drama Law & Order, criminals are caught and victims avenged all in the span of 60 minutes. For 16 years, these gripping stories were told in part through the perspective of the New York Police Department's fictional lieutenant, Anita Van Buren. Van Buren was portrayed by S. Epetha Merkinson, who was playing the longest-running African-American character in the history of television, holding down the thin blue line. In her new role, Murkison continues to represent the victims of crime, but this time she is now reminding us how often justice is not served in tidy, well-scripted packages. She is the host of cable network TV One's Find Our Missing, and it seeks to draw attention to an issue much of the media has ignored, the persistence and prevalence of missing African Americans. This docudrama hopes to help find those missing by sharing the specifics of their stories with a wider audience. Here with me now to discuss this effort is S. Apatha Murkison herself. <laughs> I just, I, I feel like I should be sure that I'm not committing a crime of any time <laughs> at the moment. I'm, I'm so excited that you are here well, with it's me. It's really good to be here. So, you know, you did for a long time play a fictional police officer, and now here you are engaged in, in real crime in a certain way, or at least in these real human stories of, of people who have gone missing. How, how is this work now filling in the gaps in real police work um, for you? Well, I, I don't think it's filling in police work for me, but well, certainly... For, for police. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. But, but certainly I think that what the most important thing is is that these stories now have a national forum, yeah. and that's been the issue all along. I was listening to your opening, and you made that very comment. As you hear about Chandra Levy, you hear about Elizabeth Smart, but what about Monica Bowie? What about Clea Hall, right. Callie Allen? Well, I mean, so obviously you're you're in the business of of television, and yes. you know, so we so we know that part of how stories end up on television, how, part of how the television agenda is set, mm -hmm. is this idea that some things are more compelling, or more interesting, or more important. So why do you think the stories of missing minorities have not been seen, for the most part, as compelling enough to be on air? You know, I. I think that it's a, a few things. I think that it's negligence in media. Mm -hmm. I think that it may be some racism involved in it. Um, I certainly think there's apathy. Um, and and I found, even talking with Jerrica Wilson of the Black and Missing Foundation, which yeah. uh, TV One has partnered with, that um, that sometimes it's it's it really is them thinking that these kids are just runaways. Yeah. And that's the thing that's unfortunate. So you lose that important 48-hour 
time right. because the, the law enforcement in the area believe that the children just may be runaways. Right, and so this is a, a different way that race might be operating, right? I mean, it's one thing to say, oh, th there are network executives who are just racist and they don't want to find black kids, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But it's another thing if we say, okay, th the problem is that there's a set of assumptions at every set step along the process right. that, that these are not really missing people. These are somehow people who are complicit in their own in their own suffering. And then certainly that time, that important time that could be used with clues and finding those important clues in that first 48 hours are, are now, they're disintegrating as the time goes by. I wanted to, to, you know, sort of think about the fact that this has been a conversation that I've heard for a long time yes. in African-American communities and, and in other communities of color, this idea that, that our missing don't matter. Uh, and so I, I just went and it was kind of like looking at some of the the, the news and the kind of announcements about the show. Yeah. And I read, you know, I did what I try not to do. I read in the blog post okay. at the okay. bottom uh -huh. and people were saying things like this, this is racist, right? Having a show that focuses on our missing that doesn't you know, portray the Natalie Holloways, that this is a reproduction of this kind of only some bodies matter. How, how do you respond to that? You know, I read some of those blogs and, you know, and then I ignored them because <laughs> the most important thing for me is that TV One saw the need. Right. Um, and the truth is in the national news, there was not a forum for these missing people. So, you know, people are going to hate and there's just only so much that you can do to deal with that. But I was, I was really taken aback by s some of the responses um, because the bottom line, some people are missing. Right. And so it's important that we do whatever we can. If that, if that means that TV One takes on this challenge, then let TV One take on the challenge. Right. So right. that we can find these, these young people, we can connect families with their loved ones, or we can give them closure. I wanted to show just a quick segment of the, the upcoming uh, TV One episode because there is, you, know, you, you have a certain force at the end when you are making this appeal to people. Yes. And I wanted to show just a beat, bit from Unique Harris's story. So, so take a, a listen to this. Somebody had to see what was going on. This is a mother. You mean to tell me you don't want to snitch? The hood has the wrong definition of being a snitch. So this is this is Unique Harris's story. We have a, a you know a, a gentleman here who's obviously in part implicating a community um, for not speaking, right? Yeah. So we've just been talking about the press not speaking, potentially the police department's not engaging. But but here's another idea that maybe there's someone else implicated here. Do you think that there's a no snitching aspect to any of this? Well, I think that's been an issue in, in our communities where you're afraid to say something and when you see something. And I, I do believe, again, this is where this show can be quite helpful because at the end of it, which is the call to action, there's a number. There there's a local number that you can call. And then you can also go on the website because at this point we need the people who have the information. Right. And so if there's a way to do this where you don't feel like a snitch, that you can literally just email uh, uh, a TV one, you can call the local number. Right. The important thing, I keep saying this over and over again, the important thing is that we have to be proactive as a community. Yeah. And TV One is giving us this opportunity to be proactive, to be a part of the community, to help in the community. Because that's the way it used to be when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, Mrs. Upchurch up the street told my mother I was smoking. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? Right. That's how we were. Yeah. That's how, and we need to get back to that. And to me, I think that's what TV One is trying to do. They're trying to get us back to community. Well, it's interesting to think of, of television as being able to to stand in the place of Mrs. Upchurch, right? Yes. That, that that's part of what happened. So actually, you as the embodiment of Anita Van Buren can actually stand in that role of Mrs. Upchurch and say, hey, yes. we have young people missing. I actually wanted to show just one more segment okay. uh, from the show, which is you in that role. And I think this is also from Unique Harris's story, okay. making that, that call and asking people to, in fact, do the work of, of calling in. Unique Harris's family continues to search for her. Although her children are too young to join the efforts, their job is to hope for the best that soon they'll see their mother. 
Unique's mom holds it together for the boys, knowing come what may, someday she will get the answers about her daughter's disappearance. I think, you know, for me watching that and, and reading so many of the stories as we were preparing, um, mm -hmm. was this sense of empathy that part of what happens is you you feel, oh, th these are young people or these are adults whose, whose stories um, matter. So